My name is Alex Arts. I'm the lead engineer here at SAS Forks out of Luxembourg, Wisconsin, and we are the primary manufacturer of attachments for wheel loaders and excavators. Some of our better known products are our 15-foot sets of forks that go to auto salvage and insurance auto auctions, as well as our Extreme Auto Attachment, which is our newest product line that we mount onto excavators, as well as our Scorpion that we mount onto wheel loaders for the salvage market. So the product that we're going to specifically talk about is our new product, the Extreme Auto Processor, which is a much more accurate device for extracting the materials that the customer wants to extract from their vehicle bodies. And it also relieves the duty of having one extra person on the ground pulling wire and cutting things out of the car for scrap value. So we developed our prototype, we sent it out to a customer, we developed another prototype, sent that one out to a different customer, and in a matter of about a year and a half, the first prototype that we sent out broke in one of the claws and that deemed us to go back into the old model files to find out what happened in the deficiencies or what happened with our analysis that made this thing break or what did we miss. Um, and through that, we were able to find where, where we needed to spend a little bit more time focusing on certain stress areas or certain working ends of the unit. Since SolidWorks is our program that we use for modeling, we went back into the SolidWorks simulation files that we had for the old prototype that was out to the customer. And we were able to go through and determine through convergence testing and things like that where the deficiency was in the design and what we needed to do to optimize the profile to correct the problem to make sure that we do not have this happen again in here. And the output from it was very satisfactory. It met all our needs for our ratios and our safety factors and items that we need to build for that. And through convergence testing, going through the model and going into a much more in-depth analysis of that prototype assembly, uh, we found that the stresses were actually much higher than we anticipated in the beginning. The high stress points in the model matched where it broke in the unit. So what that prompted us to do was to change that profile for that specific part to get it within the range of what we needed to do. Because we went through the convergence testing, we were able to determine what our mesh size needed to be, and then we were able to optimize and play with that claw profile to ensure that where it broke won't break again. And then from knowing how where the deficiency was were in the design and based on recommendations from the customers of what they wanted, we were able to make further improvements on the design, such as uh, the replaceable claw tips that we have on there currently. So what we did was we went through and designed the geometry and figured out what our limitations were from a, from a functionality standpoint and then dove right into the analysis. And because it's such a small part of the overall unit, you can really get down into the nitty gritty of what needs to happen with the modeling and the meshing and what needs to go into it. Through simulation, we were able to determine the bolting pattern that we needed. But what also goes into that is that they're custom pins that go in there and we are able to size how big they needed to be and as well as what type of material we needed to make those pins out of. In a matter of three days, we were able to have product ordered and ready to be machined in order to send out to the customer. With anything that goes for lifting product around, we need to be sure that our items are not only designed to what we hold internal to our standards, but also to the industry standards. So what we end up doing is we do a, uh, just an analysis on it, make sure that we're within what we want to be in, and then we'll go through the simulation processes, start skinning up materials where we can do it. Um, we're, we're still building it to the same toughness that we've always built it in the past. It's just smart sourcing of where we want to put the material where. For example, with forks, if we do smart material sizing for our forks, that decreases the actual weight of the forks, which increases the lifting capacity for the customer, which makes them have the more ability to move bigger things around than the, what they were if they were to buy one of our competitors. Through graphic systems, we learned really how to tweak your models, make them run faster, as well as learn how to work through convergence testing to make sure that your results are accurate and that you can trust these numbers within a certain percentage of good faith based on a certain number of numerical errors that may happen within the model. Um, but it saves days. So through the simulation package, what we've been able to do as a company is have a, a higher vote of confidence in what we get from data out of our models which directly feeds into what we can do for providing our customers with the products that they want. And when we actually go through the process of developing a prototype, we can get to the marketplace faster because we've been able to do the proper analysis in the areas that we deem as necessary. And then if anything does come up, like the example with the extreme excavator claw, we can go back into our models and find out what did we do wrong or what did we not have set right 
and work on fixing that deficiency so that when it is a fully released product to the market that we have everything worked out. Since we know that it's right through the simulation package, the customer will get a better product up front.